I got a message yesterday from somebody who said, uh, you know, who's dead broke and was like, what do I do? All that kind of stuff. And so um, I think I've talked in the past, I'll probably do another one about when, I, when I've lost everything, um, what I did step by step. Um, after I lost everything the next month, I did $110,000 in sales in the next 30 days. Like you absolutely just need skills. And a beautiful thing is that no government can take it from you. No person can take your skills from you in a divorce. Those are always your own. I'll do two scenarios, all right? Let's say you've got $50,000, all right? And you're like, okay, I'm thinking about buying uh, a house, right? And I think for a first house, you might only have to put 10% down. I'm not sure, it's 10 or 20, I yeah, don't remember. $500,000 house, all right? You put 10% down and then you get the mortgage, right? You get the liability of the mortgage payment every month. And let's say that in order for you to save that, you've been making, I don't know, 60 grand a year. And you... Now let's look at an alternative scenario where you um, are still making that same amount of money, 60, and you saved up 50. And instead of buying a house, you have a long conversation with your spouse and you say, or maybe you don't have a spouse, whatever, with yourself. I wonder how much money I could get for this money. Ah, interesting, right? And so you 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 leaf through the businesses that are in your area. And by the way, um, the best way to do that is one, you should contact brokers, not necessarily to buy a business, but to get an idea of some of the businesses that are in the area and what price ranges look like. But let's say you you know you you reach out to some businesses, things that you like or enjoy, or feel like you have some specialized knowledge in, and uh, you find out that there's a business that's doing, let's say. $250,000 a year in, uh, in, in profit, right? And uh, because it's a small local loan business, you get it for two and a half you know, times earnings, right? Which would be $625,000 is what a business, you might pay for business that's doing $250,000 a year in profit. Now here's where, it, here's where it's interesting, right? So I had um, an early mentor who, who taught me this negotiation tactic that I've used pretty much for, throughout my entire life since this moment, and I, and I used it in the deal that I'll tell you about in a second, which is agree on price then agree on terms, right? And so when you when you would go to quote, talk to this business, right? There's there's the price, which you might say, cool, you know, this business is 625, and then there's terms, right? And so the term side, once you've agreed on the price, you negotiate down, whatever, and then you say, okay, well, I'm gonna need you to sell or finance, meaning you're not gonna pay anything and you're gonna pay them over time, right? I need you to sell or finance uh, you know, three quarters of the deal. I'm doing some math today, but like 400 and you know, 30 ish, 437, whatever. And you're going to finance that for, you know, three years. I mean, you could probably, I mean, you try and push it out as far as you can. Right. And then what you have remaining, which would be like in this instance, $200,000, then you get a note from the bank, which you have a $200,000, um, loan for it. And you put your, your $50,000 down. Right. So then that would be 200, uh, so you put 50, which would be 25% of 200,000. So I'm gonna recap this. 625 is the cost of the business. You know, 437, you get seller finance, meaning you can pay that over time. And then you've got $200,000 that you get a loan from the bank. So, so if you're thinking about this, the guy who's selling the business, he sells for 625, but he's only getting 200,000 up front. You've now acquired this business that makes $250,000 a year, right? So you upgraded your income from 60 to 250,000, right? And within, you know, 24 months, all of that, you know, income will be yours. That massively speeds you up in life, right? And if you compare that to what it would cost you to start your own business, client lists, all the knickknacks you have to buy that you don't even think of, zoning permits and all the fees and licenses, um, it's actually a pretty decent deal. I'll tell you one of the deals that I did that was pretty good. So I had four locations at this point. This is when I had the gyms. I opened, I opened the first one, I think for $40,000. I mean, I, I put, I didn't, I put as little as I possibly could in this thing. And, but the second one, because I thought I was smarter, I put 200, we put 250,000 into the second location. And here's the fun thing. It made no more money than the first location did, uh, which I always think is hilarious. So like, uh, and so I pretty much would empty my bank account. And, uh, and so on my fifth location, I had a gym that went out of business or he, not out of business. He wanted to uproot because his, he got divorced or he had some, some family crisis. And so he was looking for someone to buy his, his, his gym. And so I agreed on price because I had my mentor talk me through this. I agreed on price, which I think was 40,000. And then I was like, cool, I'll pay you over the next year. And he was like, fair enough. And so, I mean, he didn't say it like that. We negotiated and then 
12 months is what we what we came to. And so, I mean, I tried to go for 24 months, <laughs> uh, but he agreed on 12. And so the beautiful thing with that was I didn't, I didn't put any money out of pocket. So, you know, my first gym, I put 50 grand in. Second gym, I put $250,000 in. Fifth gym, smarter, more experienced me, puts no money in, right? And in the first 30 days, we did 51,000 in sales. So this gym, in the first 30 days, literally paid for itself, period, right? And so this thing is now kicking off profit, right? Every month. And then 12 months later, I ended up meeting Russell and telling him how I was doing this stuff. And he's like, you should be teaching other people how to do what you're doing now. And so I ended up selling the gym for one and a half times more than I quote bought it for. And so I basically acquired a cash flowing asset for nothing in light of the original thing that I, I mentioned was just like, I get, I get people who message me all the time. Like what if, what happens if I don't have any money? I don't know what to do. You always have to just get skills or this is just my opinion is that because there's no one who can take them from you. There's no divorce. There's no government. There's no revolution. There's no financial crisis that can ever take your skills from you. And that's why when entrepreneurs hit zero, they can usually bounce back. I've done it. I had $1,100 in my bank account. You know, that's why I think I love the saying, you should only have to get rich once. And, um, and that's why people who are wealthy are more risk averse because the downside risk of losing everything is always bigger, right? Like you can reverse 30 years of great decisions with any number multiplied by zero, any number multiplied by zero. You can have a billion dollars. If you make a bad investment, it goes to zero, right? There's, there's just always things that can happen. You know what I mean? And so just being risk averse is what I have noticed from the people who have the most money is that they actually have way lower risk tolerances than the people who have no money. People are using their money, poor people use their money to buy things that have virtually guaranteed, you know, risk of going to zero, right? With tiny risk of, of upside, right? Whereas rich people buy stuff for zero dollars. They would rather have a guaranteed small return with no risk than a potential for huge return with guaranteed risk. Think about that. I see these, you know, these, these, these cryptocurrencies 20 xing and stuff, you know, in like a month. And I'm like, man, agree on price, agree on terms, try and get something for nothing. See if you're going to, if you're going to make an investment in any kind, or you're trying to start a business, there's usually a business that's already for sale or has a motivated seller, an owner who doesn't want to do it anymore, who will almost give it to you for free. Right. And that's the thing is when you're new, you're getting so excited, but you're not patient. And you'll say, I can take six months because in the, in the decade of my, in the next decade of my life, there's no rush, but me making a good deal or a bad deal of like, should I put all my investment in this thing? Or should I be able to get something that makes four times more money for free? You can do that. You can do that. So like there are opportunities. They're just not listed anywhere. You just got to look for them, right?